Welcome to Rockcast. Dire Sin Production. Mayors. Mm-hmm. Mayors. All right. I got to get that right. AKA the overload. Uh, for folks who don't know, this is my associate producer. My Hello. person who's supposed to keep me organized and moving forward. She created <laughs> this binder for me, which has many cool, many cool things and stuff in it. Uh, that one day will be applied to, to make this better. But for now, I'm doing all right. And this is episode, I think I'm going to put you in three, okay? and I have two of them for you, and I decided to stick with the ones for like, what would be, I guess, six to eight episodes, that'll be a bunch of people, so you get mm-hmm. kind of a, a broader range of answers. Yeah, for sure. Rocket book, man, I don't, you got to get one of these. I have one. Oh my god, they're cool. I mean, it's not, it doesn't seem that big of a deal, but in some ways it is. What I just like is being able to reuse and reuse and reuse. If they could make a leopard print one, I'd be down to buy some more. Oh, I'm sure you could. Well, this was a fun talk. Thanks for being on. <laughs> we appreciate you here at Dinosaur Productions, and your paycheck will be garnished for ruining this episode. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. What is something you look forward to doing? Not just something or things or anything after we are given the all clear for this pandemic. Uh, well, something I have positive. two kids. Yeah, I have two kids. They're four and six. <laughs> so, yeah. They're fun because they can have conversations, but also they're still kids. So, um, being stuck in the house has been kind of um, a bummer for us, so we've had to get a little creative. So I'm just looking forward to taking them to like McDonald's and just letting them play at McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> I really have like forgotten how much I miss just like letting them play around there. That was kind of nice. So having them that's probably the first thing I'm gonna do for a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah I know like, you love I, your kids. Moms know. love their kids, but all humans need breaks, man. Oh, yeah. Need breaks. And those little guys are just, and it's beautiful. They're learning and they're they're growing and it's just so cute. And every day you see your face on them and they just say funny stuff. But then they're also getting smarter and they're starting to trick you and they're starting to pout harder and they start to oh, ask so questions. Hard. <laughs> everybody's like, oh, my baby's speaking. I'm like, oh, you fucked up. Should have never yeah, taught how to talk. Just wait. Yeah. yeah. How old are they? Uh, four and six. Yeah, and it's boy, girl, mm-hmm. girl, boy. Yeah, so my son's six and my daughter's four. Oh, that's good. Her. Older brother is six years old. That's almost helpful. Uh, almost, except yeah. for he's like kind of the quiet one and oh, okay, he's like a little more shy. And she is like, oh boy, she's something yeah. else. Oh, that's cute. It's <laughs> good. I see you guys she are all ready for else. the holidays back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had some friends come over and get the tree out of the garage for me because, like, it's just me right now. So um, they did that for me, and then I let the kids decorate it, so that was kind of fun. I was going to, like, move their decorations, and then I was like, you know what? That's whatever. No, leave it that. It's for them. It's not about you. Unless you're, like, OCD, and every time you walk by it, you're like... No, the uh, picture you posted of the kid standing in front of the Christmas tree holding their hands is so, yeah, so cute. Oh, uh, yeah, never yeah. you say that word before. <laughs> I could end this interview right now. <laughs> All right, hold on one second. And three, <laughs> two, one. I know that look. All right, let's get the second question out of the way. We've got three minutes left. All right. So, so that's it, just to be able to get out and let your kids run free and be able to breathe. Oh, yeah. So I want it so badly. Something, if anything positive, that you have taken from these days of hell. Any insight, any 
enlightenment or uh you know changes you want to make that are you know kind of like a not so jaded view of the world that we had when everything yeah. was well, I was definitely for a while like using, you know, instead of getting stuff done around the house or focusing on things I needed to change, I was getting out a lot. So, um, so I'm now I've kind of had to like face, right? That's like I've had to face a lot of like things that I needed to change for myself, like focusing on my health a little bit more or, you know, homeschooling or all of that stuff. So, I've been hey, working on job. a couple of projects. Yeah, thanks. No, homeschooling thing's <laughs> tough. Oh my gosh, yeah. Here's to the teachers, huh? Here's to the teachers. Yeah. Who's I getting know. big raises cool after anyway, COVID? Those teachers better seriously. get fucking like, yeah. Be oh, a sure. math teacher, millionaire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm sorry, so, I interrupted you. Oh no, you're good. So I, I, I've just been working on a few of like, a few projects to get off the ground. So yeah. Kind of, it's kind of been cool to start from square one again. That's good. That's a positive. That's what it's, it's been a common theme is a lot of people, uh, uh, the family thing, like, because you hear it so much about all these families that are just falling apart. But are they? Were they already falling apart, and then they needed just to be fixed during this time and some reevaluation? And the whole world, hopefully, the ones that the, the parts that aren't going through living hell. Like, could you imagine being in a third world country and going through something like this? I mean, we're, we're sane at least. We're still functioning, despite whatever. You were talking about the families that yeah. are in third world countries. Well, no, just, just, uh, just, uh, I was talking about how, uh, it's just giving people time to reflect. It's giving people time to realize that maybe the way we've been living was kind of taking things for granted. And, uh, Absolutely. and maybe that, uh, that, uh, we have a, a weird fetish and need to keep our buttholes clean whenever something big goes down. Yeah. Or like just even, you know, reevaluating priorities in your life. Like what's what's the most important and when we go forward, how are we gonna make sure those priorities are staying in the top, you know, our views. That's a big thing for me. Like how am I gonna move forward with keeping my priorities in line and then making boundaries around those. You know, like no, I gotta get this stuff done first or whatever. So for me. All right. I look forward to doing a real interview with you. Talk about what you're going through. You could talk. It's about you, and it's a half an hour, and you could talk about your weird number stuff and oh my gosh, and uh, so leopards much. printed hundred. Some. It's not. It's. It'll be exciting when it's like five hundred. Then I'm halfway there. Then we start fucking pushing. What's exciting is the yeah, t-shirts. Like... I can't decide if I want to do a Dyerson production shirt or if I want to do. Uh, if I did a Dyerson production shirt, we could all have one and we'd have the crew shirts. But I feel I was, like you should. I feel like mine should be leopard print and have your logo on it. Anyways, it's been fucking awesome talking. To you. <laughs> uh, oh, you love it. And, all right, Jessica. Great answers. Thank you for being on a moment with Brock. Which I, I'll ask you this: Do you think I should change it to a moment with? And then the the guest name, or should I keep it a moment with Rock? Should be like Rock Cast, a moment with oh, well, Rock Cast two point oh. Rock Cast two point a, a moment, moment with whoever with. So not with Rock. Right. You're right. Okay. Because we have all the moments with you. Yeah, I guess poor bastards. Alrighty. Well then, uh, thank you very much for being on. And this episode will be out within three days. I've actually gotten pretty quick at it because now I got you, and you're going to be on with uh, Pat Eblen, and you're going to be on with who else did I do last night? Someone. Wow, I got the memory of a rabbit. Oh, Jeff, my guitar player, Jeff. I also have band practice tonight, so I'm very excited. Okay, so I'm gonna talk to you later. Bye. All right, well, so, what's up, Pat Eblen, one of my heroes musically, one of the coolest people I know, a man who throws a mean ride hook, uh, and very recently, a uh, also a homeowner, also a father, but more recently a father again, with a little tiny one, one of these guys, 
He's a little bigger than that, but yeah. Well, yeah, if you feed him, no, he him. he was like that big, but like he's yeah. about this big now. How big? He's about that large. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is no, that that's the only point of reference I'll get. It's not weight or height. He's that big. Okay. Yeah. So, what is something you look forward to doing after the pandemic, Mister Pat Eblen? Um, well, definitely going back home to Alaska and introducing my child to my mom, um, to his grandma, and to uh, all my other friends and family, his aunts and uncles and whatnot. And what is this so, boy's name? Um, I, I have a, a son born um, on the 8th of October. His name is Sullivan Mark Frederick Evelyn. And... Uh, What's that? Yeah, MF, sold in MF Edlin, um, intended. Um, but yeah, he's, um, he's just a little milk guzzling madman, but he's amazing. And I can't wait to be able to share him with the world in this crazy world that he's been born into. It's like yeah. the, the, the parameters of having birth in a hospital were strange enough where it's like Brendan and I, had, were allowed to be there but no guests like no family could come and visit until we came home and even then were recommended to quarantine and stay within our little nest which like especially in the hospital for several days after having a kid is like there's no better experience than just hunkering down you and the mom and the baby yeah, in a room absolutely. where yeah. people leave you the fuck alone dude it's amazing and then coming home and having that same kind of isolation it's been a beautiful thing like I I'm a weird kind of person where it's like I do extroverted things, but really like I'm to me like spending time with my wife and my two sons and being able to share this experience with my two sons has been a blessing in many ways. Most people don't get to have that experience and we've been able to financially afford it to a certain extent. Yeah. So a lot of people can't do that. They're essential workers and they have to go out and breathe this fucking nightmare and risk their fucking lives. You know, despite having newborns, people having newborns and then immediately having to go to formula and leave with babysitters and all that shit. Yeah, so. that's got to be terrifying for a new mom, man. This country needs to fix that shit, but we're not going into that kind of thing. That is good. And no, yeah. I'm just saying, like, we're, we're in a very good place and I, I feel blessed to be where I'm at. But I would love to have Uncle Dennis come over and meet Sullivan. In Dude, the I'm dying. Gonna, you, man. Yeah. So, but I believe I, I appreciate you. Uh, uh, you know, savoring the distance and, and doing what you can do to stay safe. I miss Thanksgiving, so. dude. I didn't, they were back on my, yeah. Good, uh, good. Eh, it's, it's what it is, whatever. So yeah, man, oh, I hope, I, I want to get to Alaska too. My whole fucking family's up there that, you know, except for my kids, but my mom, my dad, my sister, my nieces, two of my kids. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Two of the kids here. I'm going to edit that out. That's not bad. But, uh, I'm trying to get, this fucking anyway, stop messing with it. So, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, the next question is something, if anything, positive you have taken from these days of hell, these nine months. Anything while you've been stuck with yourself? Any insights or any anything that you really need to accomplish or do? You know, or have you just been being a fucking dad? Growing a well, that's, I mean, that's kind of. Those are, yeah, I'm mostly focused on the mustache. That's been my primary focus. Fatherhood. No, I mean, like, I've been, as I said, I've been extremely blessed that, like, a very short time frame before we went into lockdown the first time, I found out I was going to be a father. And then it's like your first instinct when you find out there's a viral disease out there is to stay home. Man, and keep your be. mother safe and yeah and it just has been a you know that must have been but it's been it's one of those things have, having it yeah no but it, it, it to really what it was is like my dream dude it's like working in corporate america and like brenda working as a bartender all the time we didn't spend a lot of free time alone together while we've been in seattle and we didn't get to spend a lot of time at the same time with landon 
as a result. Like I'd get to spend the weekends with him and she'd spend during the week with him, but together we, as a family union, we didn't get to hunker down with him either. So it's been more of a rewarding experience of being able to spend time as a family and really it tests the boundaries of people's relationships with each other when you're stuck in these kind of situations together, especially when it's like you're going on 40 and you got to, you're, first infant child coming into your life and it's a, it's a really crazy thing to go through but it definitely brings you even closer as a family together and you know Landon couldn't be more ecstatic to be a big brother and I couldn't be more you know focused in my family and in my life than ever you know I've always wanted children so yeah. having two healthy boys is like the, I, I couldn't ask for anything more in life and to be able to spend as much time with them as possible is just a gift so dude that's fucking awesome man that is great yeah no and you know those people there are a lot of people finding out and there's a lot of horrible things happening to people and stuff but a lot of people in this uh, great land of ours have gotten stuck in what's called a rut with people that they don't really love, with jobs that they don't really like, with fucking no goals, no personal achievements, and, you know, the Maslow hierarchy of needs or whatever. Everybody thinks it's about success and possessions and Dude, all that that's... shit. Uh, no, it's not a quarantine. All the cracks. Were... You're like, sorry, I don't share my crack with anyone. Yeah, I'm sharing never... crack. Sharing crack, the the Dennis Reed story never happened. Never happened. Fake An news. autobiography. <laughs> never, never share my no, crack. Unfortunately, this. even when I'm a, a shitty crackhead, I'm still a charming, manipulative son of a bitch back in the day. So I'd be like, you guys should let me rock it up. I'm the best. And then they'd give it to me, and they would realize, never mind, you know what? I'm, I'm going to edit all that out. I, I'd still all the rock. Anyways, right in front of him. <laughs> and then I'd smoke it. I'm not proud of that. Yeah, I guess I am. I look like I'm proud of it on the video there. I'm smiling. <laughs> All right. Well, those are good answers. Hey, dude, how did you not like? like yeah. Those are good well, answers. I appreciate the good answers. I appreciate the hangout time, bro. I just this one-on-one -on -one time with you was well worth it. Well, this is something that could be fucking amazing. And what's great about Zoom and shit, which I'm sure you're using because you got the kid in the school and stuff. Uh, we could have me, you, Sean Dillard, boobs. We could have, you know, all at once. We can actually do cool things. And I've already had an interview with Sean, so I show him how to set everything up. So he should be good to go. Plus, he's got no, no, he doesn't have the kids during the school year, does he? No, I think so. I can't remember. I am not the keeper of Sean Dillard's coming. I'm not, yeah, no. I am. I am not aware. No, but he's, he's super dad. He's a great dude. All righty then, my friend. Well, thank you for being on a moment with Rock, which is actually, uh, I think it was- Several six, moments. Several moments. But yeah, we gotta do the interview too. Uh, I'll just set that up. I just have to write down all my questions and shit. And my awesome Rocket Notebook. Rocket Book. When you want to write stuff down and then take photos of it and then, like, I guess, read your terrible writing on your phone. It's amazing. Rocket Book. Spon sponsor Dennis. Oh, please. I need I need all your notebooks. I'll take the whiteboard. I have fucking all right, I'm gonna end this. Anyways, Pat Evelyn, new father, old school motherfucker, really good friend of mine. Thank you. Oh, oh there'll be dead there'll be dead language plan through this whole thing unless you send me music before I edit this. If you want if you got any ambient thing you want to just send me a wave file. I mean, it is, uh, or an MP3. You know, I could slap it on here, and but you got to make sure you also email the information so I can do my cool little thing over there. Yeah, yeah, all right, I'll just play Dead Language. Unless you got any dope yet. I think I have all of those things. I don't know what I have on this. Not on this computer. I don't know. Look. All right. Usually I can just send stuff from iTunes. I'm going to stop on that mustache. Leaning forward like that. Let's see. Alright, guys. Hero. Father. Mustachioed man. Look at that. Look at that. It ate his, it ate his lips. It ate his fucking lips! You saw it here, folks. Rock has 2.0. A moment with uh, Rot. And Pat, I should say a moment with Pat Edlin, not a moment with Rot. Oh my God. <laughs> a moment with me. <laughs> a moment, well, with whoever. It should be a moment with dot, 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 the guest. 
I hate my brain. All right. And three, two, one. We are out here. All right. So we got the great and mighty Jeff Hill here on a moment with Rot. And a moment with Rot. Yeah, that's what these are. Rockcast 2.0. A moment with Rot. 2.0. Just trying to spread a little love, and I'm no dude. I've got 87 views on my first one. I'm now up to 200 and fucking 59 subscribers as of today, which is 10 new Fuck subscribers yeah. since I put these videos out. So this is all, but you know, I'm sick of talking about me all the time, and I want, I really, I don't know, my estrogen levels are rising or something, bro. Don't worry, it's not affecting my songwriting yeah. at all. I'm fucking slaying it. Open the record ready. now. In three, two. One. All right. On this for episode of A Moment With Rot, I got Jeff fucking Hill. And here's your quest. Guitar player extraordinaire. Father extraordinaire. Husband extraordinaire. Tall. Doodle doodle. All right. Oh, what is something you. you look forward to doing after the pandemic? Just something like that after you... The yeah. After this is over, something that you just... You can't wait to get back to, or something you wish you would have done that you took for granted, or anything like that. Well, I was uh, actually very fortunate enough to uh, do a show right before the pandemic um, with another little side thing that we had going called Knights of the Golden Grumman. And I also was fortunate enough to uh, experience a black label show uh, literally in mid March right before the pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> Which yeah. uh, makes you wonder, uh, considering that the show was sold out, uh, how many people I was around in the middle of said pandemic. But anyways, the obvious answer is uh, I want to get back to doing shows. And oh I think that we, uh, obviously, uh, some of the things I'm doing on the side, uh, community-wise, as far as... Uh, Feeding the homeless and doing food drives and just yeah, basically man. networking in general. Um, you know, it's uh, it takes a village. Uh, you know, the cliche. Uh, you know, hel helping your community. Um, you know, I, I know it wasn't a ton of help when you were going through your trials and tribulations, but oh, you were. It definitely was an influence on me. Um, and I just feel like we can, much like Joe, Ro Joe Rogers, shout out, uh, the last few promotions he was doing before the pandemic, uh, were very community oriented, doing food drives, um, you know, uh, again, the networking, uh, as much, uh, bullshit and hate that people are spewing and, uh, opinionated shit you see on social media i'm actually very optimistic but during this time i've actually encountered uh countless amounts of people you being one of them that uh, uh are are um not so much about themselves um you know it's, it's you know it's kind of weird especially for a singer you know, uh, the focus is never on that. It's it's who's doing what. Should we wear masks? Should we do this? Should we do that? Nobody knows. But yeah. what I do know is that we need to take care of our own bullshit that's in our own backyard. And I could show you it down there, fucking on Sixth Street in downtown Bremerton. Yeah, you gotta and go. I'm there every Tuesday. Um, you know feeding those people point being is that it's it's really drove the point home that uh, you know we all could be doing more and you know i'm not trying to pat myself on the back but you know i spend max 30 bucks on a tuesday to go feed 50 people that are out there on the fucking street cold and falls you know who have nowhere to go that's really cool man i didn't and, know you were doing that and I just feel that, uh, you know, once the world gets back to normal somewhat, we can use this engine of music and comedy to just further that uh, Well, idea. people are going to be a, a lot less jaded, for sure, man. People are going to appreciate... Absolutely. Very humbling times. Yeah, for goddamn sure, dude. I mean... All right, man. All right, question number <laughs> yeah. two. Question number two for my hero slash... Uh, 
food given friend something if anything positive you've taken from or any epiphanies you've had during the uh pandemic any thoughts of like you know i don't know uh yeah anything you positive you've taken from i I get what you're saying yeah uh you know i mean this is a terrible interview you know most people's not not at all i mean you got to keep the questions general anyways but um you know uh it, it's it's been apparent to me over this course of this pandemic and locking down and things not being open and how convenient it is to pass off uh, you know the attention of your loved ones and it, by that I mean you know when you can't just go and go to a park and you know let your kids run like a lap puppy for an hour hour and then come back and they're tired and you don't have to fucking read them a book or, or jam on a guitar with them. You know, it's a very an experience where you're locked in your four walls and you gotta fucking make it happen or your house is gonna get torn down to the fucking ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, there's been a lot of that. But it's also, you know, enhanced my musical uh, uh, abilities, really. I mean, it's... Uh, it's uh, you know to where I'd be out doing something else. I'm you know watching how to videos and. Well, that's good, man. And yeah. Absolutely, brother. Dude, fuck yeah! All right, well. Uh, I, li- I literally learned uh, comfortably numb last night, and uh, um, it was it was cool because it's just it was just one of those nights where there was nothing to do. It was Sunday night. Football's over, you know, fucking, we're winding down, and then uh, I'm able to sit there with my son and show him, you know, the comfortably numb solo. How was, uh, uh that's know. awesome. Yeah, so that's it's something cool. That kid, you know, he likes, he likes playing a little bit of the drums. He likes fucking screaming into a mic. He likes, he's, he's right. You're raising him right, man. You are being trapped inside with those two. You're man. a big reason for that. Well, I think we all are, man, really. It's, it's a hard thing to introduce to you. Imagine how, I mean, how old were you when you came across your first band? I must have been like, I mean, like real concert, like, you know, in your, we were playing 20,000 watts in your basement, man. I mean, that little dude was exposed to just pure, <laughs> unadulterated goddamn power. And then five dudes that just loved him to death. And, you know, that amount of love and that, and, you know, of course he sense his dad, dad's into this. So if dad loves it, I mean, dude, it's a great thing. Music music is great and it's a great gift to give people dude it's the only thing that i got it's my riches <laughs> so awesome man awesome. absolutely brother all right man that is exactly 10 minutes and 40 seconds i'm gonna end it there thank you for being on a moment with fucking rot my dude jeff we are gonna jam tomorrow Fuck yeah, make, thank make you, some man. fucking metal dude all right i'm gonna stop this but we'll don't you go anywhere metal. all right man Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. This, this is Penny Dice Production. production. The 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 Stay safe. Listen to the metal. Listen to the metal. that you must wish you lived in and uh, oh my gosh I have so else. much Dyer's to share with productions. you I just got the email from the vice president of the company said something about banning all leopard print from um, the company I oh know my we, all gotta, we all gotta go through chain dude I'm I, the vice president I was bro. like well <laughs> you're one of them Jeff oh really yeah we, he's, he's called we call him Jeff what? Recreational weed. I've had panic attacks from fucking any sativa on the trip. Isn't that yeah, weird? I, yeah, I don't know what it is. Or maybe we just and even even know. medical marijuana, dude, didn't do it. I feel like there's something to it, dude. I know. I don't want to get into that. That's a terrifying conspiracy theory, man. What are they doing to our weed, man? Why but we're both experiencing. That? It's weird, and we're both lifelong smokers. I am recording again. Yeah. That was too good of a conversation to stop.
you know, something you just during. The, God damn it! All right, take two. All right, hold on. I'm grabbing my notebook. Motherfucker! I am all right, man. This. Just have a. Can I do it? No, it's a pretty good idea to have a cue. You guys, you guys make me nervous. I'm super baked, so you don't worry about it. Charlton, when I like go into serious mode, like I'm some sort of you know, douche over here. Oh, don't worry about it, bro. I just smoked a joint too, and they kind of do. Dude, you got to get one of these rocket fucking books, Pat. I, th- I saw it. No, it's awesome, dude. I like it. Dude, it is. I like it's it. Amazing, and they have whiteboards, and they have. Uh, they got the, the the planner. I read a bunch of reviews on it. Don't fall for the planner. It's stupid. I'm gonna try to have mm-hmm. one hashtag female, and then you know, in every episode at least, if I can, because it just becomes a dude fest, and all the perspectives are. <laughs> Skewed, man. No, I want to hear from everybody. I want everybody to enjoy it. Okay. Yeah, I like how it's changing the family bit about around a bit too. You know, like there's some people where the dad goes to work all day and the mom stays home, or the mom goes to work and the dad stays home, and now everybody stays home, and now they realize that their kids are nightmares and that they got a lot of shit to work on, and the strong yeah, yeah, survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're talking about all this domestic violence and all this shit. I mean, I think a lot of the, the, those people were already in bad situations, man. You know, a lot of people in this country accept. Absolutely. I think I already spilled this in the last one. Let's see what the editing. 